Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises and glory belongs to my Lord and Saviour. His name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahabashai, Bahasham, Wahavakar Kwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and His Son's name is Yahabashai, in who I reverence and honours the elder apostles of Great Millstone that taught me this truth, and those of you that are in the Holy Spirit and that are striving to be in the Holy Spirit and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters listening and also learning in the hopes of being saved within these last days. And I want to say Tawadi Yaha Bai Sham Yahabashai for giving me another day to be able to minister unto the hopeful elect. Alright? And Lord willing this to be edifying. And this lesson is going to be a variety of topics but mainly on this topic but it's going to be a variety of things I'm going to be speaking about this is a very 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 narrow path so if it's a narrow path it's going to be the few it's going to be the few versus the many right and the many are in the what the paths of the world they're in that broad gate the few are in that straight gate and that's where we want to be in that straight gate okay so we're going to go straight to Psalms 26 chapter so lucky if I sound a bit groggy this is Psalms 26 judge me this is a Psalm of David okay judge me so David he wanted to be proven he wanted to be tried oh Lord you have a shy for I have walked for I have walked in mine integrity so the hopeful elect they were going to be walking in integrity they were not going to take any deals right they were not going to do none of that they were going to be walking in, in, in the integrity of Yahweh by Sham, Yahweh Shai. Okay, that's what they were going to be doing, right? How you doing? Hey, just a minute. That's what they were going to be doing. They were going to be walking in his integrity, right? I've walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. Therefore, would I not slide? So, if you walk in integrity, in integrity, and trusting in the Lord, Yahweh Shai, Guess what that means? You're not going to slide because you trust in Yahweh Shai. Okay? Therefore, I will not slide. Okay? Examine me. So, when we're asking Yahweh Shai to examine us, you know what you're asking for? Him to test you, Him to prove you, for you to go through trials. Okay? Examine me. So, that's proving. So when you ask, when you, you do know when you're praying this, that means you're going to be tried. Okay? Examine me, O oh Lord, how should I prove me? Which is test. And that's where what trials come in. Okay? Prove me. Try my reins and my heart. Okay? Bear me just a minute. All right. Yes, yeah, it's try my hearts and my reins. That's your mind. Okay. So when you're asking your Hamshad to do these things, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to put you through situations. Right? To try you, to test you. And ultimately, the hopeful elect, they're going to come out with what? Flying colours. It's what this word is about. Right? And it says, For thy love and kindness is before my eyes. Right? And I have walked in thy truth. So this is what it's about. Walking in the truth. In sincerity. Not doing this work deceitfully. For me, this is the everyday thing. You know? I have not sat. Main thing. Pay attention to detail. I have not sat with vain persons. Okay? So who would the vain persons be? Those are of the world. Because this world is vain. Okay, I have not sat with vain persons. 
Neither would I go in with dissemblers, and that word dissemblers, when you look it up, one who disguises who he is, one's true motives or beliefs. Right? That's what a dissembler is. So, in this truth, you don't want to be around vain persons and dissemblers because you're going to get caught up. If you are, you're going to get caught up in that same judgment with them. I have hated the congregation of evildoers. Okay? So, this is what David was saying. I have not sat with dissemblers or vain persons. Okay? Those that don't seek Yahabashai. And he's hated the congregation of evildoers. So it says congregation. So what's a congregation? It's a gathering. So I hope you see where I'm going with this. So camps, camps are a congregation. Okay. Not everything do I need to spell out. Okay, so if you if you if you understand what's being said, you understand. If you don't understand, pray for understanding. I will not sit with the wicked. Okay. So you not doing that, what are you gonna do? That means sometimes you're gonna have to depart. If you're a man of Yahabai Shem Yahabashai, you will have to depart from the wicked. Yahabashai, this is why I always say. Yes, he gives you the Holy Spirit. He, so when you have the Holy Spirit, you have discernment, you have wisdom. And with that, you're going to have to make choices. Okay? I will not sit with the wicked. So you're not supposed to be sitting up there with other wicked men. You're not supposed to be holding camp with other wicked men. Okay? Knowing they're wicked. See, there's a difference between, obviously, we've all done wickedness, but I'm talking about you have men that go off, but they, they can be what? They're going to be what's saved, but then you have the wicked. How do you know that? Because when you go to John 8 and 44, it says, you of your father the devil. Okay? So you have those that are Israelites, but they're of their father the devil. So you've got to separate from the evil. Because if you don't, you're going to get caught up in it. Okay? Simple as that. Very simple. Let's see what else we got. I will not sit with the wicked. So if you're not sitting with the wicked, you're not going to be um, dwelling with the wicked. Right? You're not going to be partaking with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocency so I will come past that altar. That's when you can what? Bring yourself as an offering before you have a shy. And the altar is the camp. The altar is the offering. The altar is where you're presenting your what? Your sacrifice. So I will come past that altar of the Lord Yahweh you have a shy. That's when you have a shy will accept your sacrifice. When you separate from the wicked. But if you don't separate from the wicked, then your sacrifice is just going to be a wicked sacrifice. And it's not going to be accepted. So that, yes, there's things you have to do. There's things we, I've got to stop saying that, there's things we have to do. Okay? If you want your Habesha to really deal with you on that level, there's particular hard, hard decisions you may have to make. If you really want your Habesha to deal with you. Because from what I'm seeing, from, from what I'm saying, from what the scriptures are saying, just because you're in the camp doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. Because a lot of men are going to be destroyed within camps. And these camps have been set up for what? Various different reasons. To confuse people, to have you think a particular way, to have you think that the Lord Yahweh can't be dealing with a man on a personal level. All these things. And again, I always want to put this out because no, camps are not camps are not wicked. Do you have camps that are wicked? Yes, but camps per se are not wicked. But you do have evil camps and you do have evil men. So again, that separation is being made. Okay. And it says, but I may publish with the voice 
of thanksgiving and tell all of that wondrous works so when you separate yourself from the wicked you're able to do that publish his works of thanksgiving and his wondrous works his wondrous deeds his miracles verse 8 I'm still on Psalms 26 Lord Yahushua I have loved thy habitation thy dwelling of thy house and the place where thy honour dwelleth okay and this truth is a habitation and it's a resting place of comfort when you're around brothers you're not supposed to be feeling all everybody's on edge uncomfortable you're not supposed to be feeling like that you're all supposed you're all supposed to be in one accordance one mind one spirit one faith but the reason why that's not happening why because you have the house of sun that's mixed in with the house of david okay you got Esau you got Esau playing games in his helicopter but soon even that even soon certain brothers are going to get spiritual power to just even think you know what Yahabashai take down that helicopter and that helicopter's going to be taken down that's the type of spiritual power you're going to see in these last days okay Esau's playing games what's that that's the police yeah that's the police let me just a minute Anyways, yeah, that's Esau trying to hinder this words. Maybe just a minute. See, Esau, he ain't concerned with... Esau ain't concerned with um, any average nigger. He's concerned with the hopeful elect. That's who he's trying to get. Okay? And it says... Verse 9, gather not my soul with sinners. Okay? So we don't want our soul, see that's, that's why you've got to separate, separate from the evil, separate from men, okay, that are not really about Yahweh Shai. You're going to have to, and ultimately Yahweh Shai would do that anyway. Gather not my soul with sinners, okay, this, this is what King David was praying. And the sinners are those that are in the world, those that don't believe in Yahweh Shai. Those that are against Yahweh Shai, they're the sinners. Those that haven't, haven't repented. Nor my life with bloody men. Okay. And this is bloody men. So this, that means there's bloody men in this truth. See, when you would read this, you just think about Esau. No, it always begins with our people first. So that means you have congregations of bloody men okay of what wicked and sinners in whose hand is mischief mischief is what badness okay naughtiness and their right hand is full of bribes because men this is this is the thing i always say what one man won't do another man will if the if the money's right if if someone comes you gotta understand our people are in a low condition our people suffer so if you have a shot, it's like it. If Esau comes to someone, or not just Esau, anyone with the right money, they may take it. Okay? Because our people, they, they're about bribes. They're about money. There's not one, there's many Judases in this truth. Here we go, another helicopter. Wait me just a minute. There's many. Okay? But as for me, I will walk in my integrity. So that's where that's where that individualism, yeah, comes in. You have to walk with integrity. You can't always follow what what everybody else is doing because it may it seems right. And why why does it seem right? Because everybody else is doing it. So it seems the thing, the in thing. And the people in the world they want to be in with the in thing. But that's not always the right path. There's a way that seemeth. Where's that in Proverbs? There's a way that seem if I'm what good unto man, paraphrasing, but in the ways is in the end of it is death. See, it may seem like you're on the right path, but you could be on the complete opposite. Redeem me and be merciful unto me, for my foot standeth in an even place, a balanced place. 
in the congregations will I bless the Lord Yahweh Abishai. So now let's go to Matthew 7 and 24. And these videos ain't just done out of nowhere. I take time in these videos to make sure I've read, I've make sure I've studied, and I know what I'm talking about. Because I study, I don't just push out anything. And Lord, Lord willing, Lord Ratazar, this week as well, I want to do more sit downs. Lord Ratazar, if Yahweh allows me, definitely want to do more sit downs. It's good going out into the highways and byways, but sometimes you just need to what, settle down, do the sit down, study, and so forth. Let's go to Matthew 7 and we're going to jump straight to Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Matthew 7, I'm looking for that scripture where it says Let's See if I can find it Here it is, this is Matthew 7 and 13 It says, enter ye into the straight gate so if it says that and this is Yahabashai speaking this is Yahabashai speaking enter ye into the straight gate so who is he speaking to? everyone? he's speaking to his hopeful elect so that's what we got to do and a straight gate is narrow okay not everybody can come in one at a time okay enter ye into the straight gate for wide is the gate okay so the, that wide gate the majority of people are going to be in that gate right the wide gate and broad is the way so the straight gate is represented represented representative of the truth okay for wide is the gate so the wide gate what does it represent death the world okay the consensus following the consensus of what everybody else is doing just like the spirit of the world and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be that go in their rats so many most of the people you see around you yes including your family and even men that claim to be in the truth they're in the wide gate they never chose the narrow they chose, they chose what everybody else was doing. They, tro they chose the tra tra tradition of the elders. Okay? And again, I'm not knocking elders, because you have, obviously, you have righteous elders that are here today. But then also, you have wicked elders. You've got to be able to differentiate who is who is Yahweh dealing with. You have to be able to do that. Because if you don't, that means you could just be following it. Anyone. Anyone. And they could be telling you anything, and you could just be following it. That's where discernment comes in. Okay. Verse 14. Because straight is the gate. Okay. And narrow is the way. So Yahweh has let us know. Straight is the gate. And that word straight goes into position of difficulties. Okay. Hardship. Because that's what you're going to have in this truth. That's what you're going to face in this truth. Hardship. Difficulty and narrow is the way. So Yahweh shall let us know how, what the way was, what the path was. Okay. So if anybody's telling you any different, they're not walking in the path of Yahweh Shai. They're walking in the path of the world. And it says, which leadeth unto life, so that's how you're going to find life. Okay, through Yahabashai, and he is the way. Okay. And many there be, bear me just a minute, and few there be that find it. It says few. De see, when we go to scripture, that's why I like to take my time. It says few there be that find it. Then when you go into Matthews, I forgot where it was, it says what? Many are called, few are chosen. So why would the many call but few chosen? Because the many didn't want to go down what that straight path. Which is Yahweh Shai. They wanted the broad path. So that means they were not chosen. <laughs> but the few that are in that straight path that endured, they were chosen. Okay? They were chosen. We're in a very, very this is a this is a very serious time. 
You're seeing more demonic things happening, more men are becoming demonic. All types of things are happening, right? Yes, men are becoming more demonic. All types of things are happening. And if you're not circumspect, you're gonna get caught out there. So now we went into that, let's go to Proverbs. I wanna get this in the right order, okay? We got Luke and Ted, we got Luke 10 and 16. Let's go to Proverbs 16 and 10 before we go to that. Let's go to Luke. Now you know what? Let's go to Luke 14 and 10. Baba Kesha. Luke 14 and 10. Alright. All right, you know what? Let's start at 14. Okay. And it came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief priests to eat bread on the Sabbath day. Okay. Right, they watched him. So they were watching Yahweh Shai. The Pharisees were known. They were known for doing that. They had, a ob they had an obsession with Yahweh Shai because he was doing many wonderful works. Okay, if someone's not a threat, you're not gonna you're not gonna bother them. You're not gonna watch them. You're not you're not gonna be concerned with them. Yahabashah was a threat to these particular men. Okay. And they watched him. Okay. And behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy disease. Okay. And Yahushua answered and spake unto the years, unto lawyers and Pharisees. And that's what the Pharisees were, lawyers. They were doctors of the law. They were well learnt within the law. Saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? Okay. Is it lawful? So they were looking, they were always finding fault. And that's why, again, another thing, you've got to trust in Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Because as much as the works you do, and really is from Yahweh Shai, as much good things you may do, people will always say, well, yeah, you could be, you could be giving tithes, you could be doing everything, you could be brotherly, and man must still find a fault, because man's eyes are never satisfied. That's why we seek to please Yahweh Shai. And they held their peace. Maybe just a minute. They start at three, and Yahweh Shai answered and spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they held their peace and took him. And he took him, Yahabashai, and let him go. The individual with dropsy. Okay. And he answered them, saying, Which of you shall have an ox or ox fallen into a pit? Okay. And will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day. And there's a reason why Yahabashai mentioned the ox. Okay, and an ass, because these are exp these are expensive animals. Remember, this is money. So we're saying, well, if you had an ox on ass and it fell on a Sabbath day into a pit, would you not grab it out? And they certainly would, because what they, their motivation was what mostly <laughs> money. Okay, so Yahabashai knew how to um he, he knew how to deal with these Pharisees in the right way, and they could not answer him again to these things, so they kept quiet. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden. This is the, the um, thing I want to get into as well. Okay, that were bidden. Because this is about taking the low seat. Okay, not trying to get fame. Like the people of this world. Not trying to get clout. Just being lowly. And you being lowly, that's how Yahushua can deal with you on a higher level and increase you. But we're not a bidden of any man. I'm moving too fast, I keep doing that. And he put forth a power to those that were bidden. Okay, chosen, selected, invited. When he marked how they chose out the chief rooms. So marked means scoped out. So Yahabashah was standing there and scoping and looking and observing how the Pharisees were choosing what? These chief rooms. In other words, chief buildings with massive spaces, right? Plenty of space. Okay, saying unto them, when they are bidden, 
of any man to a wedding. Sit not down in the highest room. Okay, so the highest room, okay, would be those rooms with a lot of space. And you could imagine they'd be decked out as well. Okay, and it says, less the more honorable. Okay, man, then, then thou be bidden of him. So, in other words, this man, and it doesn't mean he's more, it doesn't mean he's honored of Yahabashai, he could just be honored of men. But that man, he's still what, honored. Okay, be bidden of him. All right. And he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, Give us this man, so I could give this man place. And thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. And that's, that's horrible. Because, because you, you wasn't thinking. You sat down in that room, that highest seat. Like, because you were concerned, you wanted to be seen. You know, it's, the truth ain't about that. Okay. And then the, the individual that, that seat was... And you see this. It happens in restaurants. It happens in restaurants and certain places. Now you're took, told to get out of that seat because that seat was reserved for somebody else. Okay? It was reserved. Now you're take, told to get out of that seat. What great shame. And everybody's, every, everybody's looking. That's why the scriptures deal with what? Humility. Okay? Less the more honourable when uh, then thee, thou be bidden of him, and he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou begin with shame. So yeah, those that have took the high seats in this world, they're gonna be brought down by Yahweh Shai because he's the Lord of Lords, Kings of Kings. They're gonna be the one that has what great shame. Okay. And with great shame begin with shame to take the lowest room. But when they are bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, do that straight away, straight away, okay? Right, when he bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, friend, go up, higher. So he's gonna look at you, why, why are you sitting all the way at the back? Come, come to the front, okay? When shall I have worship in the presence of Rem, that sit at meat? With thee. Okay. That's when you're going to have what? That joy in the presence of them. You wasn't forcing it. Even within positions. A position shouldn't be forced. A rank shouldn't be forced. It should happen naturally. I've never been concerned in industry. I've never been concerned with the fame. The vainglory. The popularity. Just do what you got to do for your Habashat. And in due time, if, if by his means he's, he exhorts you, he exhorts you. Verse 11. For whosoever exhorteth himself. And you have many in this truth. They've exhorted themselves. High-minded, arms crossed. Like them Pharisees. They always, you notice with them Pharisees. When you look at them pictures of, of the wicked Pharisees. They always had their arms crossed. Okay. And a lot of them are wearing black as well because the black represented um authority okay and colors have representations and black also represents um in, they're like um what's it in intimidation right so these pharisees they were very high-minded but the scripture says whosoever shall exhort himself shall be abased so these things really really um lay these things to mind a spiritual man's going to lay these things to mind okay Sometimes, bear me just a minute. That's why sometimes it's good to just um, just, you know, take take a step back. Sometimes, just take a step back, observe, sit down, <laughs> and read the scriptures, and make sure that you're not fulfilling the, the lot of the wicked Pharisees. That's the last thing I want to be. Is that one of those wicked men that was against Yahweh Shai? That's the last position I want to be in. Okay. Shall be a base. So those that are exhorted in this kingdom, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to be abased. They're going to be brought to shame. But if you're already shamed and 
abased and humbled, that means you're already in that process of what that refinement. But those that are not, they're going to they're going to suffer horribly. Then they're not going to know how to deal with it because they've always been in a higher position. And people that are always high up, there's a, there's a saying: the higher the higher one, what's it? The higher you are, the the harder the fall. And that's what's going to happen. <laughs> and you can't say you were not you were not warned. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted in due time. Verse 12, Then said he also unto him that bade him, When I make us a dinner, you may invite people around guests, call not thy friends. So you don't call your, lo you don't call your local friends, those that are doing good, those that are doing well, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbours, lest they also bid thee again, because they have the opportunity to do that. They're living well. And recompense be made unto thee. Because there's a saying as well. Don't sinners do good unto sinners? Don't sinners give gifts unto sinners? Okay. And that's what the Pharisees were like. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor. Okay. The maimed and the lame and the blind. Main, what's it? Poor. Maimed, lame, blind. These are the people that are looked down upon society. Ew, look at them. Look at them. They're maimed. You may, you may have a person that has a maimed hand or whatever, disabled, lame, can't speak properly, blind. And thou shalt be blessed. Those are the ones you invite. In other words, the sick. And thou shalt be blessed of who? You have a shy. For they cannot recompense thee. For thou shalt be recompensed as a resurrection of the just. They ain't got the means to pay you back. In order of one well, recompensing you with a good deed. The rich can do that. Those of this world can do that. Okay. And it says. And when one of them. That sat meet with him, heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of the Most High. Right? We might as well continue. And remember, this was still on the same the same topic. The few versus the many. Okay. And let's go. Rented he unto him a certain man made a great supper and bade many. And he sent his servant. And he sent his servant at supper time to say to them. That were bidden. Come. For all things are now ready. In other words prepared. The dinner's ready. The banquet's ready. And they all with one consent. Began to make excuse. So those that were making excuse. Because these are the individuals that represent the world. They had other plans. Now okay. Excuse me. And them that were bidden. Maybe just a minute. And they all began to make what make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. In other words, some land. And I must needs go and see it. But hold on a minute, they were invited previously. They were invited. So they never really cared about the invitation. They were never really taking it seriously. And I pray thee have me excused. Okay, let me, when someone says, let me have be excused, let me leave. Hey, it's this fine dinner, this truth that's been prepared. But men, they want to be excused. They want to go back into the world. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. And I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. Okay. So there was one that, what, bought oxen. Okay, which is what? Livestock, food. Okay. And I go to prove them, try them. Have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife. Okay. Therefore, I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. When the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out to the quickly into the streets and lanes of the city. So obviously, that's what we're commanded to do as well. Go out into the streets and the lanes 
of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the hot and the blind okay so the sick and those that need healing and those that were going to receive Yahweh Shai right and it says and our servant said Lord it is done that has commanded as that's commanded yet there is room because there's still more room and we're bidding what? Those are the marriage, the marriage of the Lamb, which is Yahabashai. And the Lord Yahabashai said unto the servant, Go into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. So, what are we compelling the people with this word? Okay. That my house may be filled. <laughs> okay. So, that's what we're doing inviting. They may be filled, the wedding may be filled. And I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Then they're not going to experience salvation on this side. Those men that were bidden and that, were, that they wanted to be excused. Okay. This is why you got to lay these words to heart. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto Rem, If any man come to me, and remember, great multitudes, okay, many. If any man come to me and hate not his father, and you've got to get this in proper context as well, because I've been, I bring out these words and you've had men, <laughs> and because men are, not, men are not spiritual, they're carnal. Of course it doesn't mean you, you hate your mother, you start swearing at her, I hate you. No. It means you put Yahabashai, you, you're not compromising Yahabashai before anything. It means you love Yahabashai more than anything else in this world, more than your family. Doesn't mean you don't love your family. If any man come to me and hate not his father, okay, or mother and wife, and why would you? Why would you hate? It means you don't agree with their ways. Your father might, might like pork. He might do the things, he, he might be in the way of the Gentiles. Your mother may be in a way, your brother may be in the way of the Gentiles, your relatives, your cousins. Okay. May be in the way of the Gentiles. Okay. So you just you despise how they're living. Doesn't mean doesn't mean you don't talk to them anymore. It's but it's, again, it's different scenarios with different brothers. But that's where what balance comes in. Every brother's situation is different. Mother, wife, and children, even yes, even your children, even your own children. Okay. And brethren and sisters, yeah, and his own life, even your own life. Right? Because it starts with what? Our own lives, despising your own life to gain your Hawa Shai. He cannot be my disciple. So that's what's needed. So your Hawa Shai has basically given us all this, the stipulations, things we need to do. To be a servant of Yahweh Shai. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot, okay, cannot be my disciple. So that's very straightforward. If you cannot do these things, Yahweh Shai said, Well, you can't be my disciple, you can't be my follower. Okay. And that's what this this is this is the part this is the path that the few are gonna actually take. Why? Because they believe. So now we went into Luke, we went into Luke 14 and 10. And Psalm 26. Now we're gonna go to Proverbs 16 and 19. Yes, this is all about humility. So if you're humble, you're gonna put everything, all the plants, you have a sight. And you're going to serve Yahweh Shai in fullness and in sincerity. Go to Proverbs 16. <sighs> Excuse me. <sighs> Proverbs 16 and 19. This word really is suppo it's supposed to be a comfort. If this ain't a comfort to you, I don't know what is. Not the world. 
Let's go to Proverbs 16. Okay. Proverbs 16 and 17. 